big sister, my sister grew up, we grew up together. Yeah. And she, my aunt sent her off, you know, to the city to get herself situated, go to school and blah, blah, blah. And yeah. I stayed back in the country. I got a scholarship to go to, you know, uh, high school. Yeah. And we tried and we got one in Stratford High School up there in Kingston. Me, close beside um, trying to close beside Studio One. Let me see if I'm there. Okay. See yeah. From the car. Wow. And when I went here, um, I got to an interview, but I thought it was going to be a self paced scholarship. Uh, you know, everything's going to be free. Yeah. When I realized we had to pay for, for a lot of stuff, and my aunt couldn't afford that. Yeah. So School then, is expensive. All that stuff. Disappoint, yeah. The disappointing. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. So. Yeah. Did, um, now, um, you know, uh, would, would you, do you remember where you lived when you first moved to the city? Well, but I used to stay, my, my mother used to live in a uh, place called Augustown. Okay, yeah. I've and heard about this. She stayed Augustown for a little while and then she moved to the Hermitage, which is on top of Augustown. Yeah. So it was bones between my sister's house and my mom's house. Okay. Yeah. And um, did you, was your, you know, the, the, when you moved, was it for the motivation of um, just because there are more opportunities, economic opportunities in general in Kingston, or was it really because of your music career, or was it about both? I got the move because of trying to go to school, trying, trying to, to leave the school. country. That was really more about it. Yeah, it was more about it at first. Got my intention was to break up into the music, but I realized that uh, if I'm in the city, I have more opportunities. Yeah, for sure. But I have to be thinking about school first. First, yeah. Yeah. Um, now, I read that in the years before your singing career took off that you worked at a shoe factory yeah. um, on Spanish Town Road and that you yeah. served as a reservist in the Jamaican Defense Force. Yeah. Um, would you say that there were any skills or lessons or benefits or things that you derived from working in those non-music jobs that you would say later helped you when yes. you were in music? Yes, it was living. At first, you had to get something to do. You know, get, you're getting big. Life you leave, experience? Yeah you, you, yeah, you leave school. Time, you know, start living. My, my, my mom my mom said, you got to find a job. So she was working at the same place, bought a shoe company. Yeah. And she took me down there. And I got a job and started working at you know, manufacturing shoes. And at the same time I was there, I went and uh, joined the defense for the uh, reserve. Yeah. So I was in there, jumping in the job and that. But then again, at the, between the same time, the music, the music started to, try to you know, call you, call me, and um, it was a band called Skin Flesh and Bones. I'm gonna ask you about that band. Yeah, Piffa Tata, my, my friend Al Brown used to be the vocalist. Yeah. And because we had started little dirt bands here and there in the area where we live in Hermitage, between Prilly, Hamilton, and Al Brown and myself. We had a little thing called United Brothers. That was the name of a band? Yeah, that's what we started. United, United Brothers. Brothers. Group, the United Brothers. Brothers. Yeah. And then we went to Federal for... Um, to try to get try to get, try to get Yeah. But... What happened? These two people had stronger voice than me. Huh. I was the one that had the zeal to push, but they had the real voice that people want. People didn't want my voice. Al Brown? Al Brown. And who was the... Who, and Prilly. Prilly. How do you say how do you say his name? Prilly. Prilly. Prilly Hamilton. P oh. Okay. He used to sing with third word first. Before, okay. Before, before, I'll have uh, to look him up later. Yeah. Yeah, man, pretty. Very strong singer. Yeah. He, he could make with third word guy. His type of singing was like concert type. Huh. He wasn't a versatile type like by Bunny. Yeah. Like Bunny rugs more, more into it. Yeah, know? yeah. You know, now, I, I was kind of, I, I thought that you, I think I had read this now again, you know, who knows what you read these days, but I, I, I thought I had read that your first band um, that you performed with was called The Volcanoes. Yes, that, that's the same band. It's the same band. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. And then... And but before that, we used to... We used to I, I started from a little dirt band. Okay. A little band in the dirt yard. A little man called Tom Lee. Okay. He had a little... Every night, every evening, he has this little setup. up with uh, a little drummer. Save me drums. Bass arm. Little, little, little band. Wow. And we used to... You know, start to play on those issues. Yeah, you know, it's like a jam together. Yeah, yeah, like we used to chinda, have the yeah. backyard thing. And jam. Like that was a jam. Wow. So that's where it started from. Then I got to uh, now. Volcanoes. And and in the volcanoes, um, um, now roughly how old are you? You think you were 17, 18 in the volcanoes? Or? Uh, maybe 19. And um, and 
now in this band also legendary drummer Sly Dunbar was part of this band. Yeah, Sly was Sly was yeah Charlie. <laughs> Charlie Charles Dunbar yeah. You why do you call him Charlie? Yeah, when was Charlie. You call him Charlie? Everybody knew him as Charlie. Really? Yeah, he got his name Sly because he was a the Sly in the Sly family from stones. He tried to just like him. Yeah, you really liked him. Yeah, you right. like him. But they, but they called him. But, he, but, they, but people knew him as Charlie. It's Charles Dunbar. His name is Charles Dunbar. But but, they, but people also would just refer to him normally. As Only people know him. I guess he, I just I just think okay. Only people, people know him, you know, yeah. because by the time he got popular. Yeah, then everybody called him. Everybody called him Sly. Okay. But we knew him as a Charlie. Yeah. Um, now. Um, do you do you remember uh, when you first I guess um, if, when you first met when you first joined that band is that when you first met Sly? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he was with he was with drummer and Linford Harvey the leader of the band was um, guitarist and. And at, at what gigs and at what places in Kingston would the would the Volcanoes play mostly? If at that, tips at that club, club, club. Yeah, Road, we have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Where was that? The tip for the cat. The tip for that, right up there in Redis Road, in front of Pewty Bakery, on the other side of Pewty Bakery. I don't remember the numbers. I don't remember the address. The name is, okay. But I know it's way up there. We got it here. Next was Turntable. Okay. That um, the the brothers, you know, the brothers. Is that club still alive? More, more turn brothers. Is that club still alive, as far as you know? No, I, I wouldn't know. I've yeah. I've been. Up yeah, I've been here in about 30, 35 years. I've been, sure. I don't know what goes on up here now. For sure. And um, um, now, um, did anyone who was in your family, when, you know, when they started to hear, I'm sure your family got wind of the fact that you, you started to play in these clubs. Were they, was anyone concerned or worried? I just think about your father, for example. Well, he was um, a that picture a long time. Okay. He was that I didn't even know him that well. Okay. Because what really happened now, uh, I grew up with my auntie. Yeah. My auntie's husband. I see. We're Walters. I see. So when I grew up, my name was Carlton Walters. I see. I didn't even know that this was my mother and wow. this was my father. Wow. When did I, you learn? When I, when I had to leave from, when, when they had a, a split up in a relationship, I had to leave from the, that side of the country and go to my aunt's side of the country. Do you know how old you were? Or roughly? That's when I was there, about 17. Then. Okay. I, I remember when I leave, I had this land maybe about. 1670, between, between 16 and 17. Did that blow your mind to find out? Yes, because when they told me that, or, or, when I found out, it was it was kind of tough because... I'm sure, uh, I had to do You're moving from one school, and they say, get, get all the papers, and then when you go to that school, trying to raise their same as Carlton Walters, you know Carlton Walters. Yeah, it becomes very Carlton difficult. Alcohol. Yeah. And then I said, what? Wow, wow. Then my people didn't tell me. Well, luckily I knew that I knew that um I don't know what, what really happened. I, I got so accustomed to being called the Walters that I thought that my name was gonna be called the Walters after life. But when it comes to the legal part of it, no, I have to be called the Walters. And just change, big, even uh, changing your name is a big thing. It's a big too. thing. It's a big thing. Can yeah. you start to look around? You know, look your identity. Around, like, yeah. Like, yeah. Wow. You know. Well, luckily they were so good to me. They were, got, got uh, yeah, yeah that, they were good to me. They were really good to me. Now, now I, I have a few questions, Mr. Malcolm, about this band, Skin, Flesh, and Bones, mm -hmm. um, which you know I would just encourage anyone who either watches or listens to this interview, you know, just go on YouTube. You know, you put in Skin, Flesh, and Bones, mm -hmm. and you could pull up a whole slew of yeah, singles yeah. Yes. that you, and, and they're just some of the, I would say, unique yep. and great reggae music. Mm -hmm. um, now. Um, uh, before before I ask you, before I get there though, um, a not unimportant fact about you is that I, I, I guess when, when, again, I think you were maybe 19, and you can correct me, 1920, that you recorded your first single as a lead singer for famed reggae producer uh, Clement Coxon Dodd. Da yeah. That was your first single, uh, the first song called uh, Father well, Frios. Frios. Yeah. yeah. Now, personally, I really dig that song. Um, yeah. you know, Father Frias, uh, which again, anyone can listen to on YouTube, mm -hmm. is extremely pure, is conscious, and it says, among other things, that discrimination is wrecking the nation. Yeah. Um, now, did, did you write that lovely song specifically with the intention of getting Cox on to record you? Or no. had you already written that song? No, I, 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 I You had that song in your possession? I had a song, a book called... Yeah. Dictionary of Soul. 
That's what you called it? A dictionary of soul, yeah. That's what you a, had a book? book yeah, a book. That's the wow, book. that's a name. Still the book. Dictionary of soul. Dictionary of soul. And I used to awesome. write songs, a bunch of songs. I got, I, I, I've written over 500 songs. Holy cow. And I know I got about a thousand songs. You, you still have that book? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. See, now, now, let me ask oh, you yes. this. This is a, a book that you have in your possession, right? Mm-hmm. Now, if they ever had, for example, um, uh, which I have, I certainly think they should, and I mean, many people have talked about this, uh, a reggae hall of fame, um, like they have a rock and roll hall of fame. Let's just say they had a reggae hall of fame um, on the same scale and size that they have in Cleveland of the of the rock hall of fame. Yeah. If they came to you and they said, Mr. Malcolm, we we, we want to have a little car, Malcolm, and yeah. we'd like to put that book in there so that you know school kids and people you know for history can come. And look, would you put it there? It would have to be preserved. It'd have to be with a point where they don't lose it because that's yeah. my life. That's your yeah, that's your book. It worth more than money to me. I hear you. So the money couldn't buy that. Yeah. It would have to be something beneficial to another generation. It would have they would have to be a museum that would honor yes. treasure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's not about the money. Yeah, no, sure. And and I, I hope that someday in Jamaica, um, there've been some talks, there's some writers in Jamaica, one I can think of, Emma Lewis. Um, who writes a lot and has been encouraging the, the, the Kingston and the authorities mm. um, build something on that kind of scale and so that they can preserve history because yeah. like you know if, if people could look out if they can look at that book of soul yeah. wow that is awesome um, that, that, that book has in songs that uh, are written from take up take up take a little break sure let me get that book. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah well, I totally can relate. Yeah, yeah, everything. I box. just moved too, actually, and so I know I had stuff in boxes. I'm still looking for stuff, Mr. Yeah, Malcolm. I don't put everything. I don't so don't, put in there. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about yeah, it. But, I, didn't, yeah, but I, I, do didn't think, I do think that book someday will be a very, very oh, yeah. important thing for reggae history, uh, yeah. history to look at. Now, and as I was saying, um, this song... Um, Father Frias, you know, uh, which I encourage people to listen to. Um, I understand from reading some interviews about it that um, that you had the incredible, I would have to say, in misfortune of having that song. I don't know if you look at it the same way of having that song be released. I understand on the flip side, um, where on the front side of the, the record yes. was Sada Masagana, Sada Masagana by yeah. the Abyssinians. Yes, yes. Uh, and oh. that, was, that was a stronger song. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, and it oh my gosh, well, so it killed well, my thing because you know it started to get a lot of play. The immediately when I, I, I read that that you were talking about this, that this happened to you, that you had your first single released as a professional comes out on the flip side of what is one of the biggest hits in Jamaica. Because I mean, when I interviewed, I don't know if you know him, but I interviewed um, a drummer, Santa Davis. Yeah, well, I know Santa. And, and so Santa, I, Santa. I, I was interviewing Santa about how the, about the, how the Soul Syndicate uh, created the uh, Stalag 17 rhythm. Yeah. And we were talking about rhythms in, in Jamaican mm -hmm. just culture and, and music. And man, he could not impress upon me enough how when Santa Masagana came on in the dance hall, Big man. everything, everyone, this mashup, everything is, Wow, and so um, you know, I, I I can't believe that, that you had that. Now, um, you know, to to return for a second uh, to this band, um, um, you know, Skin, Flesh, and Bones. Um, I read somewhere that you know it was a nightclub band, but that while I'm sure you did play a lot of clubs in, in Kingston, yeah, I played a lot of places in, in the early '70s. Yeah. Um, but this was really, like I was saying, quite an impressive band. It included such legends as keyboardist Ansel Collins. Um, I think, right? Was an Ansel no, part of it? No, it wasn't Ansel Collins, it was oh. Tarzan, because what really happened, uh, you had two bands. One played Tiff Attack, Skin okay. and Balloons, yeah. and, and then you have another band, The Stables. Called what? The Stables. The Stables? Yeah, another okay. band called The Stables. Now, um, the band that Hansel Collins played, he played keyboards, Doug Bryan played guitar. Uh, Neville, I forget his name, Neville, he played drums. Okay. <clears throat> he had a lead singer called uh, Shake. Huh. And he had um, another one called, um, I forgot, Stina. But anyway, yeah. when they're getting, get it, getting together to record, yeah. they, they split. Oh, I see. They split like um, Hans Collins would come Sometimes from that Sometimes you'd band. be in those sessions, yeah. Yeah, the session band. With Sly, Doogie, Hans Collins from that band. Yeah. And from this band, you have Rancho McLean. Wow. Get that and, yeah. Um, now, it's kind of off topic, but do you know who formed Skin, Flesh, and Bones? 
who was the leader of the band or who started it? Skeeter Chambo started by um, Sly. Sly. And and how do you know? Did he come up with that great name? Do you know? I think I think he came up with a great name because they had a lot of different different names, uh, the different different bands in like Blood, Sweat, and Tears and blah yeah. blah blah. He decided to go Skeeter Chambo. Um, and was it uh, now? Um, was it meeting? I understand that at some point you you became friends with or you met uh, Clive Chin, and Clive Chin brought you over, I think, to yeah. Randy's, which is where you, I think, yeah. met Skin, Flesh, and Bones. Is that accurate? No, no. Skin, oh. Flesh, and Bones, which was, was, was um, even before. Maybe. No, it be, um, like I said, the two bands playing with two different, the two, the two, the two set up bands. Two, two different bands right. with different people, individuals who come together and play at different times. They skin fashion bones. First yeah. of all, it's a record as a revolutionary for Channel One. I see. But then again, after after Volcanoes yeah. broke up as a group, they formed their own thing called Skin Fashion Bones. I see. I because see. I, rem I remember when they left, I went down the country to play color, color, come. Colony, colony, yeah. something like that, don't in, in the, um, the country. Okay. I didn't go with them down there. Okay. I, 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 couldn't leave, I couldn't leave and go down there. So they went to the other hotel down there. Okay. And that's when they found the band, Skin Fresh Ambulance. Now, so. um, of course, over your, you know, as I started off saying, you're nearly 50 years as a professional singer. You've accumulated uh, many hit songs, Mr. Malcolm. Folks can look this up uh, during your career. Um, but would you agree, uh, Mr. Malcolm, that your three biggest hits, the songs people know you best for around the world, were songs that you sang with Skin, Flesh, and Bones? Yes, because um, <clears throat> most of the songs, like I said, is done by Lighter Park, the, the bass man. Yeah. He used to play with Hans Kanz over there too. Yeah. Hans, he, bass man, Light, uh, light Park, Slide Down Bar, yeah. Hans Collins, Roger McLean. Billy Bryan. Yeah. Sometimes um, Willie Lynn would be lead. Yeah. To our and so these are the people. I and and re reggae historians will know uh, people who watch this and who yeah. know a lot about reggae. They'll know, yeah, even without me saying, but I'll say it anyway, that I'm referring to a trio of songs almost all Jamaican and UK reggae listeners have a familiarity with. Yes. Um, and of course, I'm talking about no gesturing. Which came out in I think ni 1973 or 74, 74. 74. and then uh, Miss Wirewaste, which was followed by Fatty Bum Bum yeah. in 75. Yeah. Um, now there are a number of interviews that again folks can easily find on YouTube and online mm -hmm. in which you've described your inspiration for writing Fatty Bum Bum and Miss Wirewaste, but less so, uh, not 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 that you've never talked about, it, but a little less so about no gesturing and so I want to examine that song for just a minute um, Mr. Malcolm but before I do that if it's okay with you um, it's a very short song and if you don't mind me playing it um, I would love to play it. Yeah, Is man. that okay? Yeah, man. yeah. Okay. was on this album, Reggae Christmas. Man, it's on, it, it, it's on so many. It is, on a yeah. lot. No 
you still sing the song? Up to. Yeah, I would think people must always request it. Okay, I've played enough of it just to ask what I want to ask, um, and I, I, I know everyone would like to just keep listening, but I, I want to res respect your time and, and stop it, because I know you've heard it a <laughs> zillion times. Um, but um, when when I uh, announced uh, on social media that I was going to be interviewing you, um, Mr. Malcolm, um, a, a Radio Morning Magazine host um, in Kingston, her name is Sharon Hay Webster, um, she said, uh, she sent me a message, and she, 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 this is to quote her, she said, Beg him, give us the story of no gesturing, okay? And so that's exactly what I want to do. I want to ask you to describe how you came up with that classic, one of a kind song. Okay, it was less like um, society split people in two categories: one from the upper class, one from the lower class. Uptown and downtown. Uptown, downtown. And if a guy from downtown wanted to date a girl uptown it wouldn't be accepted in society. Because like, Classes uptown are girls are, we call them highty tighty, you know. <laughs> and don't tell my rebels, so right now, you want to take a, a, a girl of town and the people are going, mother not going to go with that. And, and, but uh, yes, but you know, um, I guess uh, it's just that the lyrics, for me, um, you know, for example, and, and I guess like, so I want to I wanna get to some of the, the lyrics, um, because you know, a lot of times I think uh, people who listen to reggae, and particularly people who are not Jamaican like mm -hmm. myself, you know, we listen to the lyrics and we love them, and sometimes we don't know always what they mean. So behind it, yeah. Um, and sometimes also, what I found is that there are there, things are littered with Jamaican sayings and things that come up in Jamaica that if you're Jamaican, you know because you heard that yeah. growing up. Yeah. But if you're American yeah. or you're from another country, you may not know that. Yeah. And there's a lot of wisdom. Mm -hmm. in some of these things that grow that you hear in Jamaica I mean sometimes they say things that cut to the core yeah and you remember yeah. you know things so let me ask you though the very first two lines of no gesturing um, I think and you correct me if I'm wrong are Jean's mother says that I should leave her alone mm -hmm. but how can I do that when I want her in my home mm -hmm. Was Gene a real person or just a random name you random chose? Name, random name, <laughs> random name, but um, it, 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 fits, it fits what I'm singing. Yeah. yeah, she's the unsympathetic mother yeah. to whom much who, of the song is addressed. Yeah, who see me, who see me, for instance, trying to, you know. Be with her, her, with daughter. her daughter. And she's saying, leave my daughter alone. Yeah. You know, and, uh, my daughter's not even 21, something like that. Yeah. Uh, now, um, um, Jester. Okay, jester, jester was the word for professional joker in the courts of kings and queens in medieval Europe. Yes. And that's why in the U.S., of course, we have the verb to jest. Yes. But before this song of yours, Mr. Malcolm, this massive hit song you had, I'd never heard the expression no gesturing, which I take to be interchangeable with either no kidding no or kidding, no joking. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. Yeah. Um, how did you come to use the this great word gesturing? Is that a word that you came up with or is that a Jamaican expression I'm not familiar with? I don't know. I usually read a lot of books. And you, you think books, and uh, you think you just observed that word somewhere? Possibly. I've been uh, um, gesturing. When, when I'm writing, I think I think very deep and I use I try to use words that are intelligent. I see yeah. that it means it means a lot. I don't like to write song about A, B, C, one, two, three. I like song with challenges. For sure. Yeah, from those days, I like because, like I said, I'm a poet. I write, I write poetry. You can tell. Yeah, and so you can tell. So, but you know, so but but just to be sure, it's not that's not a Jamaicanism. It's not like something that you would hear. You know, no, it stop gesturing. Like it, it wasn't was something like that. No. It wasn't. It's like something time. you came up with. It's something I came up with. It's just amazing. And we came, it became a trend on the street. Everybody started using it. Like started a, using that. Yeah, girls. <laughs> so, yeah, I love that girl. No, I just then. Listen, I it. started using that with my wife the other day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Just then, yeah. So it it could be very useful. Now, yeah. um, um, I I I was so impressed when I read um, that you know this song is so big that. Uh, song singer, uh, songwriter, actress Bette Midler mm -hmm. covered this mm -hmm. song on her 1976. On her, she has an album. It's called Songs for the New Depression. Yes. And sh your song, she covered it on this mm -hmm. album. Now I have to ask you to the. So this was I think her album came out in 76. Mm -hmm. I have to ask to the best that you recall. So this was only a few years after you had released it. Yeah. That she covered it. Yeah. 
the best that you recall, did Bette Midler and her representatives approach you ahead of time and pay for the rights to use that song? They didn't. They approached Baron Lee. Baron Lee, um, Baron Lee was handling uh, Atlantic label at the time, and they really sang to Atlantic label. Okay, so, and and did, but I guess what I'm wondering is, did did you ever see any money from Bette Midler using yeah, the song? Yeah, my publishing yeah, publishing come from that because um, I would was with Woodwater Publishing. Okay. And they control it. Wow. Okay. Okay. So that was a big boom. You must have been excited when Bette Midler. Yes. Did you Did you know her? Did you I didn't realize know how big? I did did I you didn't, realize she's like a cultural? I didn't even know that she was that big. You didn't realize in America. No, you, no, so it was after that I realized that hey, it's a big, big person. You know. Yeah, it covered your song. Yeah. Um, it's very interesting to listen to Bette Midler's version. I listened to it last night. Yeah. I listened to her version. I'm gonna go with your version. <laughs> All respect to that. <laughs> well, mine is not a version, so. Yeah, I mean yours is the original. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I I go, but I, yeah, so I go with the original over yeah. her version every yeah. day. But you know, respect to that. Um, now, um, um, uh, have you and have you ever met or spoken with her by chance? No. Okay. Yeah, I'd be curious to see if would she. If, would you? Would you? Would you like to meet her? Oh yeah, I would love to meet her. She's. Yeah. This, she's personal admire a lot when she does a movie like the rose and some other songs um, yeah she sings uh, yeah, yeah. Um, movies uh, yeah i like her. yeah um beaches she's in that movie beaches i don't know if you ever saw that my wife always watches that now wind what what well, i'm sorry wind beneath my wings wind beneath my wings that yeah, song yeah, that's right wind yeah. beneath, that's right thank mm. you that's right um well, one of, one of the reasons I, I I also asked about about Bette Midler and you know did they pay for that for the, for the rights to use the song is I know with Fatty Bum Bum I think mm -hmm. what I read is that a British group called the Diversions mm -hmm. covered Fatty Bum Bum yeah. right. and they actually that they, they hit the charts with the song mm -hmm. using your song and I believe taking money out of your pocket is yeah, that well, is yeah, that accurate they, they, they didn't take money from my pocket really. No. Um, okay. I don't put it that way. Um, well, I see, uh, um, they saw an opportunity where they could make some money. Yeah. Because um, what will happen? At the time I was recording that song. Yeah. There was an engineer that came from England, Pepper Rush. He was in Jamaica. Yeah. At the same time, transferring from eight track to sixteen track recording. Okay. Uh, you know, at first we started using sure. two trucks, and yes. then we get the eight trucks. So we're going to step into the bigger league now, 16 trucks. For sure, big time. Right? Yeah. And he was doing the uh, week transfer and thing. I was doing when I finished voicing Fatty Boom Boom, which wasn't even completed because at the time when I started, that sounded like a gimmick. And I did two verses, and to a Clive that look, I'm gonna come back. I'm going to write another verse and come back and finish this. No, he heard it. He was working his studio at night and heard it keep on playing in his ears and said, damn. He was with a band called The Diversions in England. So he read, said a dope or whatever. Pepe, 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 Pepe Rush. Pepe Rush, yeah. And um, he said. He took the song. He took the song and sent his, his How, band. did you ever, did you ever, did you get, did you ever talk to Pepe about that? No, we, I didn't, I didn't talk to him because I said, I am not producer. My company, we deal with him. Wow. Run this, they deal with him. I don't deal with him straight up because I'm just a singer. Were you angry when that happened? When you heard that this happened, that they that they were they're playing your song in England, this other group, and with the diversion, diversion is this? A, I'm just curious. I don't know. I didn't look them up. Is another? Is group, it a white band? The white band. So a bunch of white guys is a bunch playing. Of white guys, yeah. So did they tick you yeah. off? A bunch of white guys are putting no, your song no, in England. No, I, I, I don't know. For me, I don't. I don't get. I don't get mad of what people would say my song. I don't really. It's a, in some ways, it's a credit. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's, it's, a, for me it's a, first of all, it's a credit. Yeah. And I, I look back. If it don't sound good, I said, man, why the mess for song up like that? But if it sounds good. I like it. And now I read too, and I have to ask. I was didn't mean wasn't gonna ask you, but I, mm. I, I was so when I read it, I could under, I could see it in my eye when you described. I think I'm I'm not sure. It may have been with Angus Taylor where you described this, but that you you know with Fatty Bum Bum was such a huge giant hit was yeah. on the charts. I think for like two months in the UK. Yeah, you were um, in the, the in pops, yeah. yeah, and you and you went to the top uh, pop pop. Top of the Park Pops or whatever it was called. Yeah. It was a show. Yeah. That I think was very very popular in the yeah. UK. And my understanding from listening to you or reading you talk about this experience that you were kind of wet, you, you were too young to mm. know it, it, how, it, how to... The multitude, the volume, yeah. my understanding, the magnitude. You said something, you said something that I, I think I read that where, where you said that you didn't know to shake your hips 
to like an Elvis to, to sort of get the yeah, people going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so I didn't I didn't do good on that. You know, what really happened? In, everything happened in a hurry. When he sent the record to England and the other group did it over, did the, overnight. Yeah, they, yeah. You know, overnight. Yeah. And they, they started to write a chart. Yeah. And then when my company heard that and said, No, no, this can happen. Come on, let's go. Pa, they put you, the on a, yeah. put you on a plane yeah, from took me over there, yeah, to, so to I didn't UK. have to practice. You know? And they, they should never send me out there without, without a slide. That was my band. Oh, man. But yeah. they took me out there and sent me out there with um, this 60 piece orchestra who don't know anything about reggae. All they know oh is about music. Gosh. Wow. And they had the music scores and stuff that they, they sit down in front of that. So I felt like I'd, I get picked So you, you shouldn't know. give yourself a hard time yeah, about that because so I, mean, I didn't know that from reading Mr. Malcolm. I didn't yeah, know that that's what happened. That's what happened. So oh, I was, man. I was, I was. Of course good. you couldn't. I couldn't perform properly. I wasn't, I wasn't good. It was a let down. Yeah, I could see you that, know? man. And they, so a lot, unlucky. A lot of people across start cancel contracts. So unlucky because you know your career could have exploded. From yeah, that it could point. have exploded. Yeah. But um, because I didn't perform right on that stage right there they didn't have the support that you needed you have the support that needed um now um um i have a few questions also to ask about um about fatty boom boom i mean it, it's such a unique song um and again I, i'd like to if it's okay just with your permission it's a very short song yeah. i just play the song because um i think there's a pretty big dispute about what some of the lyrics are um mm -hmm. to fatty boom boom so i want to check with you because no one could be better so play. Once I heard about the song, I couldn't stop listening. It's one of these things you, if you don't know a song and you hear a song like this, you can't stop listening to it. Yeah. Ripping. over the phone to my wife and she said can you please just let Mr. Malcolm sing and please just shut up <laughs> yeah. okay Mr. Malcolm um now you sing um on on Fatty Boom Boom you sing now not because you're so big and fat don't believe I'm afraid of that but it's the next verse I struggle with and I think you sing self praise is no, There's recommendation. no recommendation. I'm, I'm the, the king, king from creation. From creation. Now, okay, I love this lyric, um, um, but at the same time, I have to be confess. I'm not exactly sure what you mean by that. What do you mean by that? I love it. I'm the king from creation. What does it mean? Okay, self praise is no yeah. recommendation. I'm not. I'm not praising myself because that I get. That's yeah. the recommendation. I'm the king from creation. That means I'm the master of what right. I can do. Nice, nice, respect. Um, now, um, by the same token, um, there, there's later in F Fatty Boom Boom, there is another part of it where 
um, where you sing, and now I have to tell you this because it just happened today too. There, um, there is a guy um, in Jamaica in Kingston. Um, he is very knowledgeable about reggae, um, and he's written a book about reggae. In fact, his name is Wayne Chen, mm-hmm. um, and so uh, he posted uh, uh, on your birthday. Okay, um, he posted this, and I'll just show it to you. He posted Fatty Bum Bum. Um, and then he wrote, see how he wrote it, Do me would a look like mouse upon a one dollar bread. Yeah. I would stop trying to, I won't, wouldn't stop trying until I, stop till till I dropped down dead. down dead. And then he wrote, yep. 1975 UK top ten hit. Mm. They had no idea what he was saying. Carl Malcolm, singer born 74 years ago, ago today on July, on 18 July 19, 1946. He got it right mm. in terms of your birth date in Black River. And then he posted a bunch of photos for yeah. you. And yeah. um, I also want to note, he said, Please give Carl uh, my best regards. His records were memorable backdrops for good times back in high school. Um, but yeah, um, so, um, but I was curious. So that's, you know, what he said, the lyrics say online, if you look, it says, um, don't need to look like a mouse on a $1 bread. I wouldn't stop, I wouldn't stop trying till I drop down dead. Okay, now. Do me that look like, uh, do I would look like, but it, uh, it's part part one. Yeah. Though me that look like, right? Yeah. They are saying, although uh, it would look like. I see. I see. Right? And, and does he spell it right? Does this, he has he got it right? D D O H M I. Yeah, you can. Yeah? do it. You, you can, can do it like that. Do, yeah. yeah. Do 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 means although. Okay, I see. Yeah. I see. Although I would look like. Now, okay. Now then, I I still I have to ask more about this verse because I love it so much. What does it mean? Another, uh, what does it mean? Because again, like he's saying, they had no idea what he was saying. I have no idea what you're saying. Uh, what does it mean to look like a mouse upon a one dollar bread? Okay, uh, here's a one dollar bread. <laughs> Big like this. Oh! Here's like a mouse. <laughs> on top of that. <laughs> so, now I understand. Now yeah. that's a Jamaican. Jamaican There's no way speaker, you would yeah. know that unless yeah. you're from Jamaica. Yeah, man, definitely. I, you know, how many people have seen this song, they have no idea what they're singing, <laughs> yeah, Mr. Malcolm. Years after the accident, Mr. Oh <laughs> my god. What did you say to him? Yeah, what oh my say? gosh, this is so funny. Um, so, um, now, um, you know, switching gears, Mr. Malcolm, and, and um, again, uh, uh, thank you so much for the time. Um, I want to fast forward past your 1970 hit, uh, 70, 1977 hit song, Repatriation, Repatriation, with, Rank, yeah. Repatriation with, with Ranking Trevor. Mm-hmm. Um, um, Though, um, when I say I want to pass over just because of, of time, but I want to recommend to everyone here who's listening to this out to go listen to that song because it's a, quite a song, um, a very, very conscious uh, song. Um, now, but you moved, it was after that song when you moved, I, I believe, from Jamaica to the United States. Um, and or sometime after that, am I, is that true? I did that, that before I came here. I did you that song in, in Jamaica. Yeah, in Jamaica. And then, but it wasn't long after that that you moved to the States, is that right? It wasn't long after that. Okay. Now, um, there is an extra, extremely impressive feature article that was written in the Washington Post. I sent this to you um, uh, in 1986. Yeah. I mean, I was blown away because, first of all, even today, you never see such an article written about a reggae star. I mean, you, you hardly ever in the Washington Post. So I was like, whoa, mm-hmm. uh, Carl Malcolm, he must have, when this came out, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> must it was, have been it a, was big a big deal. And, yeah. and um, and now it's people should look this up. It's written by Mike Joyce. Um, it's an article that you know reggae historians you need to read this article. Um, now this article gives you a tremendous amount of credit, um, Mr. Malcolm, with making reggae popular in the early 1980s yeah, in, in the Washington, Washington D.C. area. That's true. Um, and um, um, now I, I have to ask you the the article mentions you know I think you talked about performing at the Kilimanjaro nightclub um, yeah. and you know the, you know I lived as I told you I used to grew up in this area but mm-hmm. you know I think I was too young and I wasn't yet into my reggae yeah. mode yeah. such that I, I you know I would go to festivals but I wasn't going to the clubs like back mm-hmm. and I was too young probably too mm-hmm. but what were the big clubs that you recall playing other than Kilimanjaro where clubs and venues if you were playing reggae music in the DC area where were the big spots to play reggae if you play really music in the big spots, yeah. uh, if you don't play Kilimanjaro, you're, you're not rated. Right. That was. Well, that was the spot. Yeah, yeah, that was the spot. The other clubs were smaller clubs. Okay. You know, 
Okay, so all the big reggae stars when they came, the yes, Kilimanjaro is where they wanted to be. Yeah, that's where they came. People from Africa, people from all over the world, the biggest stars they could perform there. So it's an honor performing there. Now, and I know um, uh, that, you know, uh, and, and it discusses, the article discusses the your band, Positive Vibration, um, which as you told me is, is still uh, in existence today. Yes, it it hasn't, hasn't ended, um, no. and, and that, um, they, but playing more limited venues. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, uh, and this band, which includes um, uh, your lovely wife Anita, who I met today, um, and uh, your son Tyrone. Um, um, now, uh, they, they, you guys would you know, play all over the DC, Maryland, Virginia area, and you guys would back um, great reggae artists when yeah. they would come through. Yeah, we uh, started backing for the early days, like Sanchez, before he had his own band. We back. It was your ways, we back Tiger, we back everybody who used to come through Tony. Well, that's how you, you, you started against my, my next question yes. was going to be do you remember who are the, some of the most memorable people oh, yeah, man. that you backed? Yeah, man. Um, and, and those are some memorable names. Those are, yeah, those are some people we backed. Um, like, yeah. they have like Terry Fabulous, um, Jixi King, and um, Wow, Tony Curtis. Yeah, young ideas, you know. Yeah, I think I, I think the Washington Post article mentioned that you were on the same stage. I think it was Barrington Levy that day. Yeah. Uh, at Banneker Field. Yeah, Banneker Field. Yeah. 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 Field, yeah. Um, now, did people positive like Green other people like those? Yeah. Barbara, Barbara, uh, Uta, Louis, Barbara Jones. I'm sure. I'm sure whenever people came through, yeah, that they would they would call up Positive yeah. Vibration and say, yeah. Hey. Um, now, did did Positive Vibration ever try touring in California? Um, or perhaps, you know... You know, I went to California one time, I went down there on Bakersfield. Yeah? Yeah, that's one time I went down there. Why Bakersfield? I don't know, I got a contract to play down there. They had a, they had a soccer tournament wow. going down there some, some That would kids. not be the, the part of California I, I wouldn't know. imagine that you would I be didn't in. <laughs> I didn't know. That's a con fairly conservative oh, yeah, part yeah, of It's hot. Oh, it's hot as a desert. It's a big desert there. Yeah, man, I went out from the hotel. Went outside the front <laughs> It wasn't door, to me, it wasn't like to me. And I saw that... that that heat and I, I went back to the hotel and said, no, I can't go up now. So you're not, you're not going to be going back to Bakersfield anytime soon? Well, huh? maybe, no, that I don't know. <laughs> now not, that you know what it's I'm about. I'm not in a hurry. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. If it's like that, I'm not in a hurry. Now, um, but, you know, I asked because I, I guess, and maybe I'm biased just because I'm, I'm actually now, in this case is, when most, I think most people feel that their band is their family. In this case, your band is your, real, is actually really your They're family. Part of me, yeah. 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 Now, um, um, I mentioned, you know, I had the reason why I brought up when I saw I saw these drumming credits that you had, and I'm glad we cleared that up about some of these albums, you know, that they that have online where it's incorrect, where it's a Hugh Malcolm who's doing the drumming. Um, but I had mentioned, I guess I mentioned Pat Kelly because you know, did you know Pat Kelly? I guess who's yeah, curious. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, um, you know, he passed not too long ago. I guess it's been about a year now, um, and I know this because um, he was very good friends with scientists. Hey, Pat Kelly, Pat, Pat Kelly used to be. One of the engineers don't run this. Oh, watch out, you have a spider right here. There you go, on, your, on your shoulder. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. He used to, he used to be an engineer to my Randis, yeah. Yeah, so, so, so you know him through, yeah, through yeah. being an engineer, yeah. Um, yeah, in fact, I know that because the reason why I know that and the reason why I actually once got to speak with Pat Kelly is because Scientist, while I was interviewing yeah. him, the first time I met Scientist, we were, I was interviewing him at a Thai restaurant mm -hmm. and I started asking him about some of those old recording days. And he called Pat Kelly in Jamaica on the phone and said, Pat, I'm talking to yeah. Cooper here. Yeah. He wants to ask me, remember those days, Pat, when you were recording, you know, the A side and I do the B side, or yeah. maybe I have it flipped up. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, so, um, you know, it was very sad um, when Pat passed. And, um, yeah. you know, I was listening to his music recently. Uh, one of these uh, songs that I would encourage everyone is just a song that he yeah, has this song called uh, Good Day. Um, which is, uh, you know, just talks about how if you wake up yeah. and you see you see the sun and you feel job breeze, mm -hmm. it's been a good day. And uh, so I think about that in, um, a lot now these days as life has gotten heavy. And I think about Pat Kelly and how he passed and um, um, and, uh, and scientist, um, yeah, well. you know, because scientist is the one who's connected me with so many people. And as you know, I probably wouldn't be, I, I, I'm, there's, there's, it seems unlikely I would be yeah, here well, today scientist. talking to you yeah, well. without the benefit of knowing scientists who yeah. so graciously connected me with you. And yeah, scientists is big around here, man. Everybody knows about scientists. Uh, he, he was one of the most. <laughs> did you do? Did you? Did you? Did you end up doing any work with scientists, or did you just know him? Yeah, man. Well, like, I, I can say that boastingly, <laughs> when scientists yeah. used to live in um, New York. Yeah. And I was doing an album down here at a place called Culture Sound, and I brought him up here to come and mix me down. 
Wow. Yeah, I brought him into this area. Wow, so they, they, they didn't really know about scientists until you brought a lot, them down A lot of people know them, but a lot of but artists they, was their own like doing that, you know, I mean. Nice. Artists would, would, would record in Jamaican copy and have their record done already, but I started recording up here, which, um, and the, the quality of the music that, yeah, yeah, that were being done in America, they didn't have the body, they have the weight. Yeah. They couldn't get that authentic sound, no matter what they did. Wow. So I brought in sizes from New York and said, come in and stay up here. And, and then he came up here, met his baby mother up here. My, my wife's friend, if you tell who is his baby mother now, his son is a girl. So he, he became, you know, come up here and start working with some girl. My, 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 my wife was in a, was also with a female band at the same time. And he used to come and. I love watching uh, yeah. scientists work and I can't yeah. wait for the pandemic to end because he, he's, I've been fortunate yep. every now and then, you know, when, you know, when the pandemic ends and, you know, I hope he'll invite me again, but he's invited me to the studio and yeah. to watch him work, man, but you know, he's, no, he's, no one, no one has the standards like him. Man, he's different. He's a different kind yeah. of guy and um, just a special guy. Um, now, Mr. Uh, Malcolm, we've talked for quite a while um, and I only have a few last questions. Um, I hope that someday in the future, uh, you know, I, when, if I come, I, I have uh, people out here. I I'm sometimes will come out to Maryland, um, and so hopefully maybe we can meet up again. And I can because there's more questions. You have so many songs, such a catalog, and yeah. you know so much about reggae, and you're such a nice guy that I'd love to come and talk to you one more time. But um, but for today, just a, a few final questions, um, Mr. Mr. Malcolm. Um, we talked a, a lot about some of your old um, famous music, mm -hmm. um, and of course I know that. You know, you're still making music today, yeah. um, and you know, even recently, I think people were saying you know, kind of had a bit of a resurgence because I think in 2018 you released a track called "Life Sweet," yeah. um, which folks should go listen to. Beautiful song, yeah. um, produced by Willie Lindo. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, as we were talking before the interview started, la the last year, just last year, before the pandemic shut down, you performed at Rebel Salute um, in Jamaica. Um, you said, as you told me, that you worked the whole time you were there. Yeah. Um, and um, and just you know, more recently, on a more recent note, um, you released a, a, a I would call it a melancholy but funny and a sad song um, that's called Deeper Pocket, um, yeah, yeah. which uh, folks should check out on, on YouTube. Yeah. There's an official video. It's about a woman who is basically bleeding her man's pockets dry, mm -hmm. um, you go? and about capitalism yeah. and, and and what that's about and. Now, are there any other new projects um, in 2021, Mr. Malcolm, um, and beyond that the reggae world should be on the lookout for, from you? Well, I got, I got a, a bunch of records out there. One called, um, Just See Them. I did that for Willie Willie. No, that's out there. One called Daddy. That's yeah. out there, too. Yeah. And um, Let's Your Life Sweet. I know you have people pocket. Yeah. And I've got some more things I'm working on right now. But um, just recently, that. Um, a brother met in England, Papa, Papa Crook. He did over no gesturing. Yeah. And wow. Nice good. Wow. Video, not nice Is that, videos over here. I'll have to Google. I'll have to go find that yeah, one. Yeah, man. Nice good. Not, nice good video. I'll have to check that out. But, uh, um. So and, and and then finally, Mr. Malcolm. Um. Um. My. I guess this would be probably probably one of my last questions for you, or maybe the last question. Uh, do Do you have a a, a final message? Um, there's, you have so many fans. Like I said, you know, people in Jamaica they find out that I was going to be interviewing you, and you know, they probably because you've been in the United States for so long, you know, mm -hmm. they wish they could probably have you know, a little bit more Cal Car Malcolm, yeah. um, you know, uh, in their lives. But what what message do you have for all your many fans who are around the world who, you know, wish that they could see you, you know, wonder what you're up to, and uh, you know, and, and, are, uh, and are thinking about you. I'm still kicking. You know, I'm, I'm doing. <laughs> I'm doing well. Uh, you might not hear me every day, but I'm doing. I'm doing good. And uh, when the time comes, they'll see me. The right time comes. Everything takes time, you know. As soon as this thing is over, and then we can get to more, um, more frequent, social, frequent trying and, and more social, you know. Yeah. Whatever. Bring bring the music back and, yeah. the, and the people back. Yeah. All right. Yeah, well. Definitely. Well, Mr. Malcolm, um, um, again, thank you so much, and I hope that um, not only can I interview you again, but I hope that I will see you perform live. Yeah, my um, is And so, we, you know, for sure we'll keep in touch, and thank you yeah, so much for the interview. All right, I'm going to turn off my devices, and um, wow, 73 minutes. That's a good well, That's a good one, Mr. Right, Malcolm, this, you know. This is one here.
So this was just released not too long ago. Huh? It released yesterday in England. Oh wow. Oh nice. Jean's mother said that I should leave her alone. But how can I do that when I want to in my home? People, this, people love this song and I know why. Because it's awesome. Yeah. And now she is my size. So how can I forget her now when she can share my life? Oh wow, Man. thank you so much. Mr. Malcolm, thank you so much. That's so cool. Thank you. This is new release, Deeper Pocket. Thank you so much. No one can make me leave her. No just a So you can tell her wear this and get a picture with you, Mr. Malcolm. Why I never let her out of my sight. Tell her how much I'm not her type. How one day she's gonna be my wife. Mommy. I love your daughter. No, just I can't even, you know, your wife, no I guess, I know, I was curious, you must have just had all no, the ladies, just, <laughs> you just had so many women, Mr. Malcolm, in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. because you just sing to them. Bongo and Cruz. I leave that alone, you know. I hear you. Hey, you. I'm going to start to pack up some of my stuff. What a great interview, Mr. Malcolm. Wow. Thank you so much. California right now. So, um, man, it's good to have... You guys have a lot of space out here, too. Oh, yeah. And I love the... The one thing you notice is that the trees, trees out here, you know, is different than California. Everyone... California is beautiful, yeah. but the trees out here are so much more lush. Oh yeah, it's, it's yeah. You I, know? I keep this on because the pollen, you know, the 